is if when you're trying to find a GCF, if you don't know what it is off the top of your head, like you can't figure it out, that's okay. You could use prime factorization. Now, prime factorization, do we also use that for something else? Do we use prime factorization? Not just on GCF, but LCM and um, simplifying, simplifying radicals. All right, what's the prime factorization of 30? Someone, I'll go with uh, Lucy. What's prime factorization of 30? Sorry, I hear talking and there's only one person. Two, three, and five. Forty-two. Jenna? Two, two. Two, three, seven, six, seven, yeah. Six times seven is uh, 42. Okay, and what about 54? Lily, Mooney. Say that one more time. Two times three times three. So twenty-seven times two. Okay, good. So to find the GCF of these numbers, you find the common factors. So which ones are common to all of them? There's a two. There's a three. And there's anything else? So I heard a couple things there. Uh, they all share a 2, at least one 2. They all share at least one 3. Is there anything they all share in common? Sorry, with the numbers. Nope, so 6 is your number, numerical part. And then that same process you ask with the variables. Do they all share a B? No, no so is B part of the GCF? Nope. Do they all share an A? Yeah, in fact, they share two A's. So a squared, 6a squared. Say that again? Okay. So you got your 6a squared on that one. Okay. Any questions on GCF? This lesson, I'm almost not even going to give you a problem from this lesson because do you remember with factoring, what are you always trying to get out first? So every other lesson, you need to factor out the uh, GCF anyway. So 10-1, don't focus too much on on that. Go to page 569, please. And we're on 10-2. And they want you to get the GCF. Um, let's see here. Okay. Look at 19 to 24. Look at the 19 and 24. It says to factor each polynomial. Not only do you take the GCF out, but don't you have to leave something in parentheses? So make sure you do that. I don't want just a GCF. I want it factored. Um, number 21. Excuse me. Number 21. Factor that polynomial. So as you're working, when they ask me to factor, I mean almost always, I can almost say 100% the best thing to do is look for that GCF. There are a couple examples where I can think maybe you don't want to do it, but for our purposes, GCF. So does anyone know the GCF between these two values right here? What's the GCF, greatest common factor? OK, I heard 3C squared D. They all share at least a 3, two C's, and a D. All right, and what's left in parentheses? What's the first term in parentheses? One. What's the second term in parentheses? Negative 2D. That's factored form. Um, so what we mean by that, look at this polynomial at the beginning. What's going on between those two terms? What's going on between the two terms? Subtraction. Can I say that's addition? Yeah, I can say it's addition. So when I factored it, you know what I did with that polynomial? I didn't make it a subtraction problem or an addition problem. I made it into a multiplication problem. That's why we call it factoring, because you're taking it from addition, subtraction, to multiplying. 
Okay, number, oh, number 22. This one is a different type. What's your first step on this in this problem? Look for the GCF. Is there a GCF? Is there a GCF? Yeah, it's one. Does that do you any good? No. So what do you do on these problems when you have four terms? Do you remember what we call it? Factor by grouping. So factor by grouping those on 22. Okay, um, Matt, can you factor the first two? Okay, thank you. Turner, can you factor the second two? And uh, one thing I want you guys to get very clearly is what is the sign of C that you factored out? Is it a positive or a negative? Okay, either? Well, it's a positive. Okay, it's a positive for this one. Now, if you factor out a negative, which you can do, you can factor out negative C, what happens to these signs? They change. Can I factor again then? No. So I got to make sure that these two pairs match up. Uh-oh. So if they don't match up, we'll take that um, negative C. How many of you thought to do negative C instead, which is tough? Okay, so here, that, that, and that. Are they really the same now? They don't look the same to me. So can you just, yeah, some of you are already thinking, can you just switch these around? And you would get negative C times Y minus B and A times Y minus B. So now they, they work together. And what's your final, final answer on this one? Jenna? Okay, A minus C times Y minus B. And that's tough with that negative. So does that sign right here matter? Does that matter? What you factor out? Do this. Because if you did positive, you're stuck. If you do negative, oh, it's not too bad. Okay, that's that lesson, wow. Not too bad. Page 578. Um, are there any questions up to this point with GCF and then factoring? Trinomials or four-term polynomials? Okay. Hopefully it's straightforward and you will see this again in other chapters. 578. We'll start there. 578. Um, okay. The instructions are different from what I'm going to ask you to do. Factor number five. Factor that polynomial, number five. Okay, this is a trinomial, which is what this lesson is about, a trinomial. It's written in descending order, that's from last chapter. And what's the coefficient of the highest term? One. If it's one, these problems can be done very quickly. You just factor it out into two binomials. You know that x goes into both first spots. How do I figure out that second spot on each binomial? Yep, go ahead. There you go. What two factors of 24 add up to be uh, positive 11? So what are those numbers? Okay, I heard 8 and 3. So it's an easy check. What's positive 8 times positive 3? 
positive 24. What's positive 8 plus positive 3, positive 11? This is your factor. Okay? But it's not always that easy. Number 9. What happens when that number is not? It's impossible. It's impossible. Maybe. So, it's impossible is a possibility, but that's not possible on this one. 4x squared minus 8. Bridge this to the factor by grouping. Bridge this to the factor by grouping. Yes, there's another way to do it. If there's a GCF, yeah, like if there's a GCF, take that out and then factor. But this one you can't. But yeah, look for a GCF. Good, good call. Okay, what are your two numbers? Oh, what are your two numbers? Jack, what two numbers? Sorry? Oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> and yes, I tested you and you passed. <laughs> I don't know, well, I guess I did, I guess I did eight times three, which is wrong. So yeah, four times three, Jack, you pass. And Lily, bonus point on today's review. Okay, what are the two factors of 12? Sorry about that. Okay, good. Negative 2, negative 6. So you get your 4x squared. And it, it doesn't matter which one you put as long as you got, um, you can do your factor by grouping. I'll just go with this one. Okay, and so what factors out of the first two? What factors out of the second two? So who can give me the first two factored out? Uh, Brian. Uh, 2x. Okay, 2x. What's left? Um, 2x minus. Okay, what factors out of the second two? Give me a sign. I need a sign. Um, Lucy? Uh, negative 3. Negative 3. So what's left? 2x minus 1. And then final, final answer. Um, final, final answer. Carson. Uh, 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. Say that again. Uh, 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. Um, I think you're very, very close. Yeah, 2x, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 1. Okay, good. I'm triggered. <laughs> I was actually talking to my wife about that. I'm like, these youngins use these words I don't know about anymore. And uh, what I, but I told her this. You can quote me. One of the words I do like and that I can use is trigger because we get that and I, I like the use of it. So don't trigger me. 584, page 584. <laughs> They're not joining Oklahoma City yet. Five eighty four. Okay, so I don't know what's going on, but let's go to five eighty four and um, um go ahead and do number eleven. If you read the if you read the question or the uh, instructions it'll kind of make it easier for you, I hope. Maybe, I don't know. Possibly, possibly not. Number 11. 
So this is kind of a little warm up. When you're factoring, what's the title of the lesson? Differences of squares. Do you guys remember those? Maybe. If not, here's a reminder. Okay, they gave you options, so you didn't have to come up with this point blank. But when I'm looking at this uh, binomial, what do I always look for anyway? It's like every other problem. GCF. What's the GCF up here? And I'm left with my 4x squared minus 1. Okay. So now I can look at this and say, is this a difference of squares? So is this a difference? Check. Are both of these squares or are they able to be square rooted? If they, how many of you say yes? These are both squares. This is square and this is square. And, and what do we mean by perfect squares? They are and they're a difference. So I can factor them immediately into 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1. And don't forget that 4. He doesn't just go away. You guys okay with that? Yes, sir. Four x minus two. Four x plus two. Okay, you could have got, you would have gotten that if you didn't factor a GCF out. But both of these have a GCF. Do you know what both of these GCFs are? Two. So you have a GCF here of two comes out. You have another GCF of two comes out, and now you get what outside? Uh, four. And then you have the 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1. So it has to be factored completely. Good question. Who understands factor, uh, factoring differences of squares? You kind of can get this one. Good, because you're going to be tested on it. Number 16, 10 seconds. Go. Yes, yeah, 16. You have about five seconds. Time is up. What's my answer? What's my answer, guys? Sorry, could, uh, Harrison, do you mind closing that door? Sorry about that. All right, what's the GCF? Let's go through that. GCF? No. Uh, is this a difference of squares? Can you factor that? What do we call that? Prime. 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 You write prime for number 16. All right, fine. How about you do number... Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. Number 26. 26. Go ahead and do that one. We'll move on. Yeah, 584, number 26. Rosalind, is there a GCF? No. Alex, is this a difference of squares? So I'll look, is it a difference? Is this a perfect square? Is that a perfect square? So it's a difference of squares. And uh, Autumn, can you factor it for me? All right, there's too much talking over there. So there's still too much talking over there, and I'm not going to say it again. Sorry, I hear stuff. And it might be because I'm getting old and I hear things, or it could be people are talking. So, uh, How many of you got 4a minus 5b times 4a plus 5b? Okay, good. You guys okay with that? Yes, sir? Oh, you got it. All right, let's keep moving here. Uh, 591, we're dealing with perfect squares, perfect square trinomials. You guys remember those? Yep. What, do you, what three questions do you answer? The yes, yes, yes questions. Is the first term a perfect square? Is the last term a perfect square? And the third question is the hardest one. 
is the square root of the first times the square root of the second times negative 2 or positive 2 going to give you that middle term. No, excuse me, number 11. <laughs> number 11. So if you look at this problem, you're thinking, okay, it's a trinomial. Is there a GCF? Is there a GCF? Almost. Here and here, there might have been one, but is it the same as that one? No. Those two have one. Those two have one. Those, okay, so th they, you have pairs that might have a GCF, but do all three have a GCF? The answer is no. So you're like, am I going to do the bridge method? It could work. I mean, it does work. I'm not going through the bridge method. So I start asking, is that a yes? Is that a yes? And I should actually make it, is that a yes, the whole thing? And then what's the square root of 4n squared? What's the square root of 7? And then what do I multiply it as well? Negative 2, because it has to be a negative value. Do these three multiply together get me this? OK, if that is true, then I can factor it into a binomial squared automatically. And does anyone remember what those terms inside the binomial should be? It's kind of like completing the square. It's here. You guys see where it is? It's 2n minus 7. Minus 7. Done. So you got the 2n, you got the 7. What sign should be between the 2n and 7? It's that guy. If it were a plus 2, plus 7, which is really nice. Okay, so go ahead and do on your own. Number 16. Uh, let's ask, is there a GCF? No. Does it work with the, uh, even with the binomial squares, you know, like X and X, is there anything that's going to get me there? Nope. Sorry. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a yes. That's a... Can you get the square root of negative 9? No. It's a no, 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 no. So it's prime. Yes. If you came up with something, like if you came up with a binomial squared, you need to work it out and see if it comes out to that. I'm guessing it comes out to positive 9. If you worked it out, it comes out to positive, which is not what we had to start with. That's prime. Okay. Last one on this, I think. Yes. All right, 10-6 is solving using the factoring. So go to page 598. You can use any one of the factoring methods we've looked at, but which one do you always start with? GCF. And then see what you have. Do you have a binomial, a trinomial, or four terms, and then solve. I think you guys can do this maybe quick, a lot quicker than you did at first. Page 598. Okay, let's start with number five. Let's get number five. I'm writing something different up here, so don't look up here at first. theorem says that when two or more numbers are being multiplied and they get me zero, 
one of them has to be zero or both of them has to be zero. It's called the theorem. Zero factor theorem. So are these two being multiplied? So one of them or both of them have to be zero. So what does G, what does G equal when G equals zero? I know that sounds re re redundant, but it's zero. What does G equal if this is going to equal zero? Negative five. So those are my two answers. Um, do you know why I wrote this top line here? Yeah. Yeah, they gave you a, they gave you one step into the problem. So they gave you this, but you're going to get this and then realize, oh, I can factor a GCF and now I can solve it. Okay, let's go for a tough one here. Oh my, oh my. Number 22. On these problems, where do you want all those terms? On one side or the other. And if you want it to the left, that's probably the easiest one on this one. OK, and then you start looking at, do I have a GCF? No. It's a trinomial. So I can either do the simple binomial, or it might be a perfect square trinomial. So really, you could get to it many ways, but let's see how you get it. Okay, what method did you use, Maggie? Okay, so you're saying yes, yes, and yes? Okay, so what's your perfect square, uh, what's your binomial square, excuse me? N minus 12 squared equals zero. And if you're like, well, what does that mean? Doesn't N minus 12 squared means, mean N minus 12 times N minus 12? So what are the solutions for M? Or what is the solution for M? Yeah, it's the same thing, so M equals 12. Okay, that's the only one. You could say M equals 12 and M equals 12, which is M equals 12. So might as well just say M equals 12, right? Got it. Okay, you guys okay with those? All right, your homework. Go back to chat, and then you have the rest of the time. Hopefully it's a lot, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, you have like seven minutes. Uh, sorry, someone said my name. Yep. Okay, let me get this written down and then I'll. Oh, man. I'm running out of room here. Not too bad. Less than last night. I should say fewer 